today we are going to make some tape salad um, and uh, we're going to work with the ubiquitous uh, cartridge tape, the HP cartridge tape, uh, also known as a DC100, that's what the 3M equivalent would say. And uh, they look like uh, regular cassette tapes, but they are not. Um, they are way more evolved than that, uh, and they are made for data. And they are the bane of the HP restorers, they happen everywhere. And until today, I had been unable to make a DC100 work. But I think I have found a way to rebuild them. After, as you see, some uh, some unsuccessful attempts, but now I am good at it. So I'll take you through that because uh, some machines just don't work without these tapes. So these are no ordinary tapes uh, or, or tape cartridges. And these were made specifically, uh, actually the small one was made specifically for HP. Uh, and, and then eventually uh, 3M did a thicker version of it, which is the Quick Tape or DC2000. That's what this one is. But they work on the same principle, which is basically the tape is not pulled by the capstan. Instead, the capstan moves that little guy. That little guy pulls on a band, an elastic band, or a band that's used to be elastic, that goes around, goes here, 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 here. And the beauty of it, supposedly, is that you can uh, have much higher speeds, you can rewind uh, at high speed, you can also start and stop fairly easily, and the speed of the tape is, com is, is totally independent of how full the um, bobbin is. I had a box of 3M uh, DC100 data cartridge which came when I got this one and I don't think I ever tried one from this batch so we'll try our luck okay so this one fits REW to rewind ah they're not broken and then you want to erase the tape afterwards we go erase tape although this one should be a new tape so I shouldn't be I have to do that but just to demonstrate it's erasing the tape okay. error 43 I think the band just broke yeah so that what happened is the band broke yeah that was the error 43 I have to start with a rewind, which is kind of tough on tape, so... Okay, well I see the tape moving. Yeah. It detected the beginning, so that's good. T-list. Nope, no nope, such luck. Yeah, I can, I can see that the tape on this side is skewed up. Alright. I think you're onto something. Uh, okay, I can see the tape. Oh, crap. So, all right, so up in first inspection, we can tell what happens. The band hopped over the uh, take-up reel. It, it should have gotten around and somehow it climbed over and then the band lost tension and the whole thing went haywire. Okay, so that is the two sa DC2000 that we just had tape salad with. And uh, I, as soon as I took the band off, so this tape was went over and as soon as I take the band off, you see that it's all curly here, so that's not a good looking band. There go. Now it reverses, goes the other direction. It's stuck, darn. I have a lot of trouble to get the lighting right, but I think you can see it. So the problem that happened is this streak right over here this is residue from the oxide of the tape and that got sticky 
uh, so either I didn't clean it well before or it accumulated during the test uh, of uh, the retentioning of the tape so I need to clean that and hopefully after that I am good it's really hard yeah yeah you, you, here you see it this residue here that's where the tape stuck I can also tell what's happening with the with the uh, original HP DC 100s is not only the band breaks, but it sticks on the band and it just sticks away with it, the materials. Oop, there. Ooh. Nope, I didn't like it, so I don't know if it's because the tape has been damaged, damaged at the beginning. There is damage here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it might be that the elastic band is good, but the tape is now ruined. Is now bad. Oh no, there is tape on. I can see. Ah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, let's ruin that tape now. Oh, gee, man. Okay, so we have undone the tape salad and put it back here because there is a, what I think is happening is that the tension is not correct. It's too low. When we put it, and there's a command on the 85 which will supposedly retention it by going both ways at low speed. It's called C tape for condition tape. It's not so slow. Oh, that was a rewind first. Okay. Mm -hmm. see. And by the way, I just got them. These are the start of tape holes. This is two holes, and then at the end of tape is just one hole. Here is the whole beginning of tape hole sequence. So you have two here, then two here, then two here, and then a whole long uh, piece of a new tape. There is more after. This two holes is one final last hole, very, 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 very far away, right here. So it's one hole, there's three pairs of holes. And then I compared it with an original HPDC 100 tape and the pattern is the same, the spacing is different, so it's my first hole. And then 24 inch later is my first pair of second hole and it was 30 inches in the uh, DC 2000 and then the second pair is 12 inch 12 inches away and what was it on the uh, on the DC 2000 it was 24 inch is away hmm so there's a difference in whole patterns between DC100 and DC2000 that I didn't know. Maybe that screws up the 9825. And so I think we're going to do some tape boiling here, see if we can uh, restore the bands to a little bit of a better state. So we have now two bands that look pretty bad. I think that's all for the boarding experiment. I'll remove it and see if it improves anything. Or, or instead we would just eat this over here. <laughs> <laughs> Better. <laughs> Should you wait a little I, I, bit longer? I, I, I prefer the, uh, the... What you were saying is we need to ask the professional cook here. If it's cooked sure. enough. Okay, boiling doesn't... Uh, Look like he has done that much to our band. So another trick from the interweb. So we are trying to do a, we're working off internet myth here. Is a plasti band. And uh, at least you have one thing going for it. The color is good. All right, so 
No, we have nothing to fear. This looks too long. That was my fear. I think we don't need to. No, it's not too bad at all. Oh, ah, okay. Well, Look at that. All right, so. So, I'm ready with my hand. And yeah, you have to, can you hold the cartridge? Yeah. Right. Oh, we're big. We're pros at this. But you yes. know what? Yes, I'm surprised now. It's the right size. Well, it's the right size and it's really pretty. So <laughs> I'm going to give it a try. <laughs> okay, rewind. Wouldn't you know it? Okay, so I've made myself a little fixture with uh, two locating pins, a quarter inch groove, a quarter inch groove, and an eighth inch groove here uh, to help me locate holes in the tape. And here, then the pins are supposed to locate the top part. Yes, I worked. Next. Oh, that was our good holes. All right, this worked. And then uh, you can see them behind here. So two holes. They're pretty good. So that should work. Okay, I think I now have a more or less reliable techniques for resurrecting DC100 cartridges. Let's see if I can resurrect that one. So that one has. A broken band that's what's left of it a broken piece of tape that's the uh, the part with the little holes that's just gone so we don't have the, um, the little beginning of tape holes here we go and all right so we are going to try to resurrect it. So first thing to do is I learned the hard way is that if those posts are not perfectly clean, bad things will happen. I can tell that right here it's not perfectly clean. So first thing to do is to clean the darn posts. Because if not, the tape kind of sticks on it and it causes tape salad all right so this is good this is good so second thing is making sure those are free and on the 3m cartridge they usually are free uh, but on the hp they are not so i just drill them a little looser with a number 57 drill bit that's open Point one two eight. Oop. So no shimmels up from zero point one two five. And now oh, they are noticeably freer. And this guy is less important because it only touches the cap stand. So as long as it turns freely, which it doesn't really. There you go. That's better. Okay, so we have a clean platform, easily free uh, pulleys here. Um, and now we need to redrill the holes on the band. All right, so we go over here on my fancy schmancy fixture. Okay, so it goes on the fixture and uh, drive if I'm not wrong yeah 25 inches 
25 inches. That's... So I drill drill the first two the first pair, and they, uh, yeah, beautiful holes. And uh, then the next one is 12 inches. All right. Okay. Now we have to re-spool the darn thing. I discovered that in the HP documentation, they actually say to moisturize the darn thing. Okay, this is a little bit not clean. Apparently, this is the right method to do it. Moisturize it, and it should stick. Do the thing, and up you go. You need some love. There you go. All right. And now you want to coil it all the way past. So here's my first pair, second pair, third pair. And now the single hole, which is the beginning of tape. So you want to be past that. That way. Okay. All right, tape is in place. Next step is to take your favorite color of plasti band, plasti band, four and a half inches. And there is some special feel that you have to develop here. So you put it right in the middle, like this. You keep the tape tension. You go around here, and then you hold all the things down together at the same time. Boom. There you go. Now, tension the thing. And that should be it, yep. Okay, alright, so next step is to bring it over to the HP85 over there, which I use to retention the tape. You too, so you put the tape and the uh, HP85 has a convenient C tape, condition tape command, uh, which will uh, restore the tension to it by winding and unwinding it. So first, check that it finds the beginning, it did, so my holes worked. And now it's coiling it all one way and then we'll just do it all the way the other way. So right now it's rewinding, let it just do that. Right, so now we're going to see if it works in the HP 9825, which is the super sensitive one. Okay, so now we're with the uh, 9825, which I haven't been able to make the tape work quite yet. Uh, and it doesn't have the modification yet for the better tape, so I have to see if it works. I was trying to make it work with the DC100. And it's very sensitive because it drives the tape way faster than the 85. So rewind, see if it finds the beginning of tape. It did. And then we are going to mark five files of 320 bytes. Okay. Then we are going to rewind and uh, see if it can list the directory of files. T-list. And it did. So he, yay, we finally have revived uh, the tape drive, or at least the tape. We made a tape that's good enough to work in the 1925, so it tells me it sees five files. 
with uh, 320 bytes in it. So I recorded a program for the first time in my life here in this machine and to read it is load files, very primitive, files have only numbers, so load file zero. Let's see if it can read it back. And then run. It did. I had it print that the tape works. Cool!